Uh, I'll just do this real quickly, because I think what I want to do is just highlight, in some sense, what are you going to do as a function of coming to something like this? Uh, as an organizational psychologist, I work in uh, translating these kinds of ideas and learning principles to the workplace. Um, you know, it, sometimes you don't think about this, but I mean, we brought up about the military. Uh, the amount of money spent in, in the workplace on learning and, and training is, is phenomenal. So these principles are certainly applicable to the workplace. I just wanted to highlight that uh, in terms of my work in the workplace is around transfer training. So when people go to training, do they actually apply it to the job and actually do something different as a function of that? In a sense, you can think about that today. Are you going to do anything different as a function of what you heard about today? Uh, I highlight that one square, which is you know, open skills, autonomous. In some sense, a lot of times when I do training in the workplace, you're training managers on principles uh, and hoping they might apply that to the job somehow because they're autonomous. They can decide if they want to do this or not. So this idea of personal choice, I think, is really important in talking about learning, especially if you're interested in transfer of learning. Just like today, you have a personal choice whether you're going to look into the, these, any of these issues more and whether you're going to try to apply any of these things into your, in the classroom teaching, right? You're autonomous. Nobody's watching you. Nobody's telling you. You have to do this. You're making a personal choice. So I'm, my research, which I won't get into today, is just more on what, what factors influence that personal choice process. Okay? Uh, but teaching and, uh, you know, is the same, same thing. Uh, so I'll just move to this model, which is um, based off of Steve Yellen's work. Steve Yellen's right there in the back right there. Uh, things we've worked together in for a number of years now, but you know, I just encourage you to think about this in terms of what you talked about today. Uh, you know, what did you find credible out of the presentation today? All of them. What did you see was practical? Okay, and what did you see that you personally could need and actually improve your teaching or your uh, teaching assistantship? Okay. Uh, we know those are the three factors that are critical to influencing your intention that when you leave here today, whether you think you might want to try something out. Okay? But we also know something very important. Intentions are the paved with good intentions. Right? All right? And we know that from our research, that good intentions is not enough. Okay? So what does our research tell us about intentions? Okay, intentions, general intentions do not lead to behavioral change. So when people go through these training programs or these teaching kind of seminars and they leave with good intentions, we know that that doesn't lead to behavioral change. Okay, so it's more than just good intentions. Okay, and why is that? I'll just show you, uh, you know, one form of research from psychology that talks about decision avoidance, patterns of behaviors where individuals avoid making a choice by postponing it or seeking an easy way out involving no action. So just think about this in terms of what we learned today and thinking, okay, why don't faculty, I mean, you brought it up at the beginning of the, the talks today, why don't faculty or teachers apply these well-known and fairly reasonable sounding things to do in the classroom? But I think, you know, we also know from psychology that, that we're, as individuals, we, we have our own way of thinking about things. We, we know about why, why do people make no decision, or why is it that intentions don't lead to behavioral change? Well, we know that positive prior outcomes, believing my performance has already been good, increases the tendency for the status quo. So if you think you're a good teacher already, why do I have to incorporate any of these fun things, right? Um, or anticipation of regret, worrying that trying out new skills may not succeed. That favors an action too, right? I mean, the idea of well, what do you do when somebody asks a question and you're not sure if it's creative or innovative answer versus wrong, you ask that question. Well, that, that's part of this anticipation of regret. Uh, the other is decision makers tend to associate action with more potential regret than inaction. So if I just keep doing the thing I've been doing, that's, that's, I'm more comfortable with that than worrying about the potential regret if I try something and it fails. Okay. Another is people tend to weigh potential losses greater than potential gains, leading to also a preference for not, uh, inaction. So I think there's logical reasons why these kinds of things don't get applied. Uh, often or uh, uh, without a lot of support. So in the workplace settings, you know, we always talk about support. What's the support 
behind the training. It's not just about training. You can do training till the cows come home, but training in itself does not lead to behavioral change. There has to be systems set up, there has to be accountability systems, there have to be all sorts of systems that are set up, there has to be alignment of systems. I could go on and on about all those kinds of things, that's what organizational psychologists do. Uh, but I think you, know, you could see that uh, if you really want to diffuse innovation, which is really what this pan these panel is giving us great strategies around innovation, around teaching, we already know what are the, the, the problems with trying to diffuse innovations in organizational settings. And uh, those are the challenges that I think uh, MSU and other places have to kind of face. Are we serious about the, incorporating these innovations or are we not? And if we are, then we have to do more than just do s seminars and teaching uh, things, because we already know that that leads to good intentions. And we already know good intentions don't lead to behavioral change. Uh, so I guess that's my main message. So my challenge to you today is around that issue you know, personally today. Uh, what did you find that was credible today? What did you f see that was practical? What do you see that you need? Please don't think about regret. You know, try things out. When I talk to my graduate students who are teaching, it's you got to try these things out and see what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Okay, these are these are principles. You've got to practice them over time, over time, over time to get better at doing these things in the classroom. If you're not willing to try it, you won't get better. So I guess that's my message for today, and I, I thank the panel for coming. They did a great job.